言うことは一つだけ絶対負けねえ Hey, how's it going, everyone? There's nothing excess here with a new player analysis.、Uh, this is for the two banners that we did not really cover, which are the red,、uh, the toughness type player pickup transfer, and the agility type player pickup transfer. We're going to be covering El Cid Pierre, the fierce, beautiful beast, Rio Mahino, the chosen elite, Louis Napoleon, the cannon shooter, and Nobuyuki Yumikura, his own path. So, without any delays, let's begin because these guys have been waiting for a little bit. First up, we've got El Cid Pierre, the fierce, beautiful beast. Uh, he really looked a lot better on Elise when we didn't really think too much about it. But the fact that his stats aren't really all that edged out on anything other than shot kind of hurts him a little more than we'd like. He's only got like 10.3k shot, 8.7k pass, and 8.4k intercept as his highlights. He's not really going to light the world on fire in any reasonable way, but he is a reliable character.、Um, what's really notable is that he has the best shot you can get without outright buying the character with Feel of Dreams on it with、uh, $79. So if you do have the Valentine's Day Gacha Blue Pierre, you really do want this unit. But you want him because you want his shot and really no other reason.、Uh, so, in the general,、uh, the general consensus is pros. He's a solid shooter and decent passer and cutter. He has a passive that boosts his stats by 10% when you play him with Napoleon, which, if you have the Dreamfest version, is easy. And he gives Red Europe 15% with his team skill. Now, the cons are that his team skill is mostly for Rainbow Europe, but it's also kind of bad for it since it only gives 5% to non Red European players, making it a little weaker than other team skills like Morientis or Booty. He's just kind of mediocre overall. Like, his stats aren't high enough that you would consider running him over some other characters. And frankly, the Red Pierre from the World Cup is so much better. And obviously, like, if you didn't get that one, then you're kind of stuck with this guy. It makes you feel kind of bad about playing、uh, Dreamfist Napoleon because this is the character that makes Dreamfist Napoleon pretty decent in the same type. So, it is what it is.、Uh, so, his positions are forward and attacking midfielder. His roles are striker and enabler. And also, you want him for his skills. I would rate him an A. You know, he's still not that bad. Like, he's very usable. He does have a bunch of good skills on him to start. It is what it is. Would I go for broke for him? No, I definitely would not. For his limit break, shot, power, 25 25, and then focus on pass, intercept, and technique with a 17 17 16 split. For his stats, he's got 982 stamina.、Uh, as you can see from his stats, he is a little bit loaded on shot. That results in a kind of mediocre dribble, but 10.3k shot, 8.7k pass. Not much for tackle, but 8.4k intercept. He's not good at high or low balls whatsoever. For his skill build,、uh, he comes with Slider Cannon Shot S and A Eiffel Attack.、Um, and I do believe he also comes with A Artistic Dribble Attack. You're going to want to find a Slider Pass to give him and also A Magnificent Interception.、Um, you could use the B Magnificent Interception on him until you can give him a much better A version. But for, other than that, he's just kind of perfectly average. He's the guy you run in Red Europe if you didn't get the Broken World Cup version, basically. Next up, we've got Rio Mahino, the chosen elite. He's a bit overlooked despite being surprisingly useful. You see,、uh, this Hino has a problem of existing in a color with better options for Red South Americans. That said, for now, he works really well on the South American Japan team due to his team skill, as well as his passes being quite solid when it comes to allowing him to score. The problem is that his good shot comes from the Dreamfest version, so unless you have a spare, it feels awful to level up Dragon Shot since it's quite bad. Still, 10.9k shot. And a times three critical passive is no combination to sneeze at, especially with good at high balls and a jumping tornado shot that you hopefully remember to farm well this last event.、Um, pros, practically 11k shot with an X3 critical passive. He has a decent 9k dribbling and a decent 8.8k tackle, and he's also a source of the good version of A Dragon Pass. For cons, though, he can't pass to save his life, so you're gonna have to pull A Dragon Pass and put the C version there instead, just as a last ditch effort or filler. His tackle can only be gotten from the Dreamfest version and must be pulled from it. And he also needs the Dreamfest version shot to be really good.、Um, he is a forward. His role is a striker and also for his skills.、Uh, I would rate him an A also. You know, he's actually quite decent.、Uh, he is underrated.、Um, I think he's actually a lot better than people think he is. Would I go for broke for him? Nope, definitely not for this guy either. For his limit break, 16, 16, 18 split for the dribble tackle and speed row. And also 25 to shot and power. Quick look at his stats. He's got 991 stamina. Not going to break the universe, but not bad. Shot 10.9, dribble 9k,、uh, tackle 8.8k, and then everything after that is fairly lackluster. Not quite good. He is, however, good at high balls, 12.5%. For his skill build, keep the A South American dribble.、Uh, replace the pass with double speed, double spin, tornado shot if you have a spare. A jumping tornado shot, also a very good skill, and A power charge. You really only have four skill slots, which is more or less fine since that's what you have. Access to and what you'll be using. Double speed, double spin tornado shots, quite nice if you can get a dupe of Hino for him, and it'll do great damage considering it'll crit much more often. Jumping tornado shot is also underestimated by many players.、Uh, 
you could think of its true momentum as 371, not 325 because of the high ball buff. So if you get this guy and you want to play him in red South American slash Japan, he's pretty interesting, so I would recommend him. Next up is Louis Napoleon, the cannon shooter. Just like with Refound Fangs, this is one of those units who I initially had a lot of trouble really understanding. So let's be fair, he's a difficult unit to wrap your head around. He has some features that make him really interesting, like 50% fire potential and 10% opponent's defense, uh, like subtract opponent's defense minus 10%. But at the same time, his stats just didn't improve enough in some areas for him to really feel that useful. Despite all that, I think there's a silver lining here because he serves as a weird player that tries to blow through his stamina quickly to set himself up for a sure kill shot late in the game, and he uses Insight Master very effectively to help his weaker guesses succeed early in the game. I don't think I rate him highly enough, but because uh, some players have used him to great effect, but I am not convinced that there's not other players that you can use more easily and more effectively. Pros, he starts the game as a pesky tackler and enabler and ends it as a wildly strong shooter and enabler. He can hit 22,882 shot in optimal circumstances, which is a little hard to do. He weakens blue defenses substantially. Now for cons, he's hard to really get going and hard to really feel good about investing resources into with easier to use versions around. Only truly strong when he's about to run out of gas. He is a forward, his role is a striker, enabler, and debuffer. I rate him a B, but I, I want to be convinced that he's A, but I'm not sure if he is, for real. I would not go for broke for him at all, uh, for his limit break, 22-3 uh, dribble speed, 22-3 pass technique, and 25 to shot and power. Uh, you can also try a, uh, a more utilitarian 17-17-16 split for both dribble tackle speed and pass intercept technique if you would like to. Some players are running him like that and seeing some success because he does have access to that AEX pass and an Eiffel attack and stuff like that. For his hidden abilities, he's got opponent defense minus 10%, I rate that an S. Listen, as long as this guy's on the team, all of your opponent's blue players lose 10% to their defensive stats. That's actually surprisingly good, something that people don't really consider. If you pair him with Insight Master, or you pair that with Insight Master, players really can't bully you out of the ball by themselves if you're good at reading players' intentions. Next up is English Player Killer. Right now, it only merely makes Robson irrelevant in matchups against him. But uh, if and when more English players come, you know, maybe another Galacticos banner, then that will be an actually very useful passive. His uh, rain puddle resistance, yeah, whatever. And then fire potential A, fire potential is on a character here and there, but not at 50% and not as a hidden ability. Uh, it's a really big boost and makes Napoleon progressively scary as the game goes on and very quickly too. If you give him a strong tackle on defense, use it liberally and feel free to dump the EX pass on him so you can more quickly get to the breaking point before going all in to try and crush your opponents. For his stats, he's got 1,044 stamina. And as you see from everything else, it looks kind of mediocre. And it's because it is. His dribble is only 8k, shot only 9k, everything else is in the 7k's except for his tackle 7.8. Uh, really not that impressive at first glance. You, you might be wondering, well, is this character even worth using? But remember that fire potential 50% really does ramp up as the game goes along. Also, Insight Master will help you when to get to the point where you can bully people. Strike a skill build. He's got a cannon shot. You can't do anything about it. Unfortunately, it sucks. He comes with a straight line dribble, which is nice. Keep that. Uh, then teach him a strong tackle. Actually, I believe he comes with a strong tackle. My bad. Teach him a straight line dribble, uh, a Eiffel attack if you can, or the S version is also fine. And S cannon burst shot. And this is for the striker skill build. If you know you're going to spend most of the time shooting and setting yourself up to shoot, don't worry about giving him a pass and just go all in on the 1 2 tackle and dribble and a shot. A cannon shot isn't really enough to put fear into any goalkeeper, so it's pretty much what you need to do in able to really threaten a goalkeeper. Your shot will only be truly effective late in the game. This unit sees almost destined to be a Dream Cup late game annoyance for Blues versus Blue matchups where he'll come on in the second half to debuff an opponent and make the goalkeeper sweat. Now if you want to mail them as an enabler uh, instead of the um, shot, give him a strong pass EX. If you're, more, if you're more committed to actually trying to enable other players and will only shoot to drain, this might be more up your alley. Use a strong pass EX to drain your stamina quickly and enable other players and to get around defenders though, it, though it's used in case they try to tackle instead. This Napoleon isn't crazy, but there are uses for him, although his maximum potential is a lot more complicated to reach than most other players. Uh, his benefit really is in the fact that fiery potential will eventually make him extraordinarily obnoxious to deal with, and you should rely on that. Finally, we've got Nobuyuki Yumikura, his own path. Yumikura just sort of just exists. He's not particularly strong on offense, 9.7k shooting and 9k passing, and he has no real drilling to speak of. He's not really good at defending. He has 8k tackle and 7.9k intercept. But, you know, everything is good. Everything is just mediocre. His skills are mostly mediocre, too, except for a drive pass, which is quite good. He's just real basic. There's not much to him, and you don't really need much here. He's serviceable until you find a better midfielder to use, and that's basically it. His team skill is more or less obsoleted by Matsuyama's, and his passive is not a very strong version of Japanese player killer. 
All in all, perfectly usably average. He is an attacking midfielder. His role are striker and enabler. Um, I rate him a B. You know, he's he's okay, but he's not. He's like a bench player. Um, and but he is the kind of bench player that you will actually see plenty of use because you will put him in sometimes if you just had so many levels of drive shot lying around, you'll eventually find use for it. Pros decent at a few things. He's got 7.9.7 k shot, 9 k passing, 8 k tackling, 7.9 k intercept. He's decent against Japanese players due to his passive. Uh, now for his cons, he's just way too average. He's really not that good at anything in particular, even the things he's more or less weighted on, like shot. His uh, For his limit break, I would go 22-3 drill speed, dribble speed, sorry, 22-3 uh, pass technique, and 25-25 shot and power. For his stats, he's got 960 stamina. Everything else is real mediocre, which only results in 7.6k dribble, 9.7k shot, 9k pass, 8.0k tackle, and 7.9 intercept. He's not good at high or low balls, unfortunately, but he doesn't even l learn anything for those, so it is what it is. For a skill build, he's got S drive shot. You're not really going to change that because you can't. Uh, a drive fast, quite nice. Uh, a swift sliding tackle, kind of whatever. High speed scissors, B farmable, and B swift perception, also farmable. He has all the skills you're going to teach him available in both an SR version and two raids, so his two extra skills are easily farmable. He's just so perfectly average that it hurts. There's really just not much else to say about him. There's no alternate builds. There's not nothing. He's just... A striker and enabler that you should not be going for broke for. He's definitely not worth it. Uh, and really just rate him a B. B might be a little too generous. He might be a C, but Japanese player killer is some serious stuff. And it will help you a lot when dealing on defense with other Japanese players. Now, normally I would end the video here. But I have to revisit a character that maybe I didn't give a much of a fair shake to. Now that I've actually played against the debuff meta in red. And that I've actually seen people run this character. And how effective he is when you give him the right skills, I think I'm going to revisit him. And it's Kojiro Hyuga Refound Fangs. Now, I keep revisiting this character because I'm frankly never sure I completely understand what I'm seeing. On paper, he looks like big trash. I can't quite look away because I know there has to be a lot more I'm missing. What I was failing to completely see was the kind of team you're going to use him on. By himself, he's not much. It's when you run him with Super Sub Misugi and Nambasa and Red All Japan that you see more of the picture. Uh, he has a If you can give him Drive Tiger Shot, uh, you get a 48,267k uh, shot check. Uh, with both his own passes active and you'll think well that's not very crazy but it adds up when you realize it's cheaper for him to use and 50% more expensive for the opponent to save and it's strong enough that people are gonna have to actually legitimately try to save it um, not only that but he also with all these other characters uh, if it's against a non-Japanese team you're gonna be debuffing that non-Japanese team by 9% and that's a lot that's actually way more than people think it is it might just be enough for that Drive Tiger or that Raiju that you taught Hyuga to overcome the difference so it is what it is these three units on a team with World Cup Aoi make up one of the more surprisingly gross combos I can honestly think of. He's a forward. Uh, his roles are a striker and debuffer. Uh, I rate him an A, honestly. Now in revision, I don't think... I really don't think he's that bad. I think I was a little rude to him at first, but over time I've sort of, sort of, sort of started to really appreciate what he brings to the team. Uh, it's just hard to quantify because it's not just shoot, win game. It's... A little more subtle, uh, a little more annoying, a lot more insidious, honestly. Pro's 9.9k shooter that is buoyed by the uh, rest of his team skills into being a dangerous, draining shooter who can do it constantly thanks to cheaper skill usage. Cons is a 9.9k shooter, merely 83 best shooter, and needs too many parts from other versions to really come into his own, and he's not really good at anything else. For limit break, 22.3 dribble speed, 25.25 shot power, and 22.3 pass technique. Uh, the argument for 25 speed instead is a very good one, and I would personally recommend it. That's what I would build. 25 speed, 25, 25 shoot power, and 22, 3 pass technique is probably the better option. For his hidden abilities, he's got uh, opponent stats minus 2%. As long as this guy on the team, all opponents, non-Japanese players, are at all times 2% weaker than they normally would be unless they're receiving a debuff protection by someone like True Captain Tsubasa. He's got a stamina killer. He spends, I believe, 50%... For his opponents to spend 50% more stamina, which is pretty nice. The, uh, for his opponents to waste more stamina is always a benefit. Uh, keep the stamina advantage to turn the tides of a match in your favor. That will always be a good idea. He is uh, uh, not affected by bumpy effect. Woohoo. Uh, he gives all of the middle schoolers on his team uh, all stats plus 2%, which is fine. You know, it's a B-rated uh, ability because there's not that many middle schoolers you can use. However, Nambasa and Super Sun Misugi are definitely going to be on the same team as him in all red japan so that will be worth it and then all special skills force plus 10 there's really no reason why this isn't a 100 percent activation rate other than k lab thinking that randomness is a good substitute for proper game balancing 
And it's not. I really wish K-Lab would stop this. Just If you want to make it 70% uh, power, then make it force plus 7% and leave us alone, you know? Uh, RNG is not that fun. Um, it's better to just have... Like, y the RNG will more or less probably round out to be the same anyway, so you might as well just leave it at just a 7% inc uh, increment and move on. Now, for his stats, he's got 1,077 stamina, and his stats looking pretty mediocre except for shot. That results in 9.9k shot, and then everything else is just forgettable. 7.5k pass and 6.9k dribble round out the offense. 6.9k attack on 7.2k intercept. Right now on the defense, that new Kojiro Huga, the Stormy Resurrection one, is way better. He's like the same stats everywhere else except for defense, but his shot is 13k. It's a big, big, big difference. For a skill build, a tiger shot is fine. Uh, you can't change it anyway. A straight line dribble. Uh, pretty decent. Then give him S Drive Tiger Twin Shot if you have a dupe. If not, S Raiju also works. A Tiger Pass and A Fierce Tiger Tackle. There's not a lot to do here with this guy except to give him Drive Tiger Twin Shot and to hope for the best in terms of a scoring. His debuff will greatly impact a lot of teams you might be having trouble with. And it will only get a lot more obnoxious once the non-Japanese Dream Fest goalkeepers come into play. So think about the ramifications there because 9, minus 9% to non-Japanese players is going to be absolutely awful to deal with. Especially when these three can run around on a team with World Cup Aoi on it. Anyways guys, thank you very much for coming to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to click like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a comment uh, telling me what you think about these players. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, go over to the big red button and click subscribe. And then click on the little bell so you get notified when I upload a video or go live on stream. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Uh, if you want to support me uh, financially, you can do so. Um, there are a couple ways to do it. You can just donate through the Streamlabs link. Stream Labs link. That's one way to do it. Uh, that's just a one-time donation. I appreciate it very much if you do do that. There's another way. Uh, there is, it used to be that you could be a channel member, but until I get monetized again, that won't be the case. However, you can join the Patreon. I give a bunch of cool stuff to uh, my Patreon uh, members. Right now, it's just PDFs of the... Um, you know, if you, if you donate a certain amount a month, you get access to the PDFs of all these videos so that you can use them for your own reference. Uh, you also get to vote on some stuff, uh, like what videos are going to come up next. I do have a poll running right now as to what videos people want to see next. Uh, two of them are Players Guides videos, and one of them is a uh, Dream Fest, uh, I mean a Dream Team Analysis video. The Dream Team Analysis video is more than likely coming no matter what, but if people want to see it earlier rather than later, then they can definitely vote for it. Uh, so yeah, just click on those options down in the uh, video description and let me know. Anyways guys, thanks a lot for coming out here, and I hope to see you guys soon.